and this is Chloe with Co-Motion Makerspace. Uh, today's lesson will be about creating 3D shapes in Rhino for 3D printing. Uh, I firstly apologize for my voice. I went a little too hard at karaoke last night, but hopefully I'm still understandable and you will enjoy this tutorial. So first what we're going to do is you're going to open Rhino. I have it set to millimeters for a small object. Uh, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to create shapes from 2D curves. So first we're going to start by drawing our basic shapes. I'm going to do a square within a circle. So first I'll draw my circle with the circle command. I'll just make it about this big. And you can see I'm using the four window view because once we're working in 3D, having the multiple views becomes very valuable. Um, so here's our circle, now let's put in a square, so rectangle. And like this. It's not perfect. That's okay. Let's see, it's got the gumball. There we go. And there we go. So now our first option here is to select all of this and use the command extrude curve. And don't forget, Rhino does weird abbreviations sometimes like this. So now it's asking us how far we want to extrude it. So you can say that you want it to go 25 millimeters. And your other options here, uh, both sides will make it go that direction, both directions. Solid is usually something you want. That means all the, it will create all the walls as a solid. Uh, Otherwise, we'll just do the outside walls. Uh, delete input will delete the curves that we are using to create this. And I don't find that helpful because you might want to use your curves for similar things in the future. So 25, hit enter. Here's this. Uh, you'll see that we only have the wireframe view in our perspective view at this time, uh, to, which isn't always very helpful. Uh, you can use this right here. This will turn on the shade view, and that will help you see but everything looks like a 3D. However, you have internal structure that you'll need to be able to see. You can right click on that and it will turn that off. So that's one way. This will work if you have simple shapes like this. Um, if you have, you'll notice that there was the square inscribed in my circle. So if you just have one shape without anything inside of it, when you extrude it, it'll just be solid, but the when, as you see with this rectangle, there is nothing inside it, so the whole thing is solid, but since this had something inside it, this part is not created solid. So this is usually just a simple way to create um, a shape that is very simple. However, there are other ways to do it, and you'll see which method best fits your needs. Now I'm going to show you how to use the loft command. I've gone ahead and drawn a couple of concentric circles that all have different diameters and a different stack uh, and different stacking order. So I'm going to select my circles and use the command loft. Loft will create a surface that will go through all of the curves that you've selected. As you notice, there's the seam point here. That's uh, where the surface starts and ends from, and there's all these arrows. You want to make sure they're all going in the same direction, otherwise uh, crazy rhino things will happen. Everything looks good, so we're going to hit enter. And now it'll give you options of how you're going to uh, fit it. So you can say, if you want it to be loose, that means it'll just kind of follow the curves you put in, but not really. Um, you can have tight, which means it'll hit every single one of those curves perfectly, and then Normal is a slight difference in between the two. Uh, you have op the options to create straight sections so that each section between each curve is straight and uniform, or as opposed to the whole thing being a curve, like what you would have gotten if you used the curve tool. Uh, other things like that. And you can play around with uh, rebuilding with things like control points, uh, those, that's better for more complicated shapes, but this is pretty simple, so we're just going to hit normal and loft. And see, now we have this shape. At this point, it's just a surface. It's not anything that can be printed, but you could do other things with this. This is really nice if you have a complicated abstract shape that you need to create. 
So for example, you could create something like uh, multiple curve lines. So where this excels is doing things like this. So we're going to just draw some crazy curves right now. So I've drawn a series of abstract lines. I'm going to move them away from each other just a bit. There we go. So, well, it's sideways, but whatever. Um, there we go. So we have like this. We're going to do loft again. And again, this is where you're going to have those options to fit things because as you see, this uh, this little one isn't hooking up to this part at all. So if you want it to be tight, yeah, you'll have to move things around quite a bit sometimes for really abstract shapes like this. Things like that. Oh, the reason it was being all weird is because I was rebuilding with only 10 control points. And if you remember our talk on having like points on, points off, the more points you have, the more detailed your shape can be. So when I say do not simplify, it'll actually conform exactly to the lines how I want them, which is usually what you would want. But feel free to play around with that loft, see? So now we've got this crazy wavy shape, which is another great way to make a surface. Um, you just have to develop something around it so it'll print normally because this is a surface, not a solid, and the difference is that this is only like one face of an object and you need it to be complete for it to understand how to um, print it. Uh, if you really just want this shape, you can also do things such as extrude surface, which will just extend it into the th uh, third dimension. So let's say we just want it to go out about like that. So now, we have an extruded surface, actually. So you could 3D print this because you see, well, actually, in my mistake, remember how I said <laughs> you have to make things solid? This is one of those things, because if you noticed what happened just now, and I'll do it again, the extrusion was only actually on the sides. This whole part is still open, which is not acceptable for 3D printing. So we're gonna make sure to toggle solid. And there we go, see? It's now the whole thing is a solid shape that you can print with relative ease. Our next option to create a 3D object is using a command called edge surface. So with edge surface, you know, can take between two to four uh, curves and create a surface out of it. This is really handy if you've kind of freehand drawn a object and now you want to fill it in with some solids and some uh, surfaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to doodle out a little object here, just a little rectangular prism. Here's our rectangle. And then I'm going to draw a point here. Elevate our point. You know what, for funsies, let's make this more complicated. Another rectangle. Make it offset, raise it, and rotate it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw some lines to be the edges of our surface. So I have my smart track on, so it'll snap to the edges that I want. So here is the base frame of our shape. So uh, since this is still all one uh, polyline from when I made it a rectangle, I'm going to explode this to get the individual uh, curves out of it. See? Because we just need them one at a time. And same thing for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the four boundaries of the face I'm about to create. See? Like that. And we're going to do edge surface. Uh, there's one. So one of the advantages to using edge surface as opposed to other things such as a uh, planar surface, which we can do here, I'll show you. Well, maybe here, we'll do it to this one. Planar surface I find is less versatile than edge surface is because 
it'll only work for things that are planner. However, while what we are doing is relatively planner right now, it won't always work. As well, we'll just continue doing our edge surfacing. See, ta-da, now we have a surface that we've created using edge surface. Edge surface is really versatile. It's really nice to use for things like curves. But again, just like loft, it can get a little crazy. And one of the downsides, uh, as I mentioned, is you can only use four edges to make your surface. So sometimes you'll have to explode and join certain lines so that you can have a usable edge to create your edge.